Hello, I'm Sean D. Francis, and this is part four of the Campaign Builder Workbook video series where we are creating a brand new campaign setting from scratch. In part one through three, we went through the campaign survey tab of the workbook and filled it out. As you can see, we, we, we collected a bunch of information, and now we are going to start adding detail, fleshing all of this out. We'll probably be spending two to three videos uh, just on the village of Black Rock Keep. There's a lot of information here that we will want to flesh out. This is the first location and these are the first NPCs and the first adventures your PCs will be uh, interacting with. So we want them as detailed as possible so you can start playing right away. All the information on the campaign survey gets ported over to this page, so there's no having to click back and forth uh, unless you want the notes that we filled out. So the leader of the village is Captain Learian. Uh, we don't have much about Captain Learian right now other than I'm thinking that she's an elvish captain who spends most of her time ranging in the wilderness, looking for threats to the region, to the village. So how did Captain Learian become the village leader? How did she become put in charge of Black Rock Keep? And I'm thinking that she earned her way. She was promoted through the ranks. I don't want her to be a villainous character. I just want her to be aloof to the concerns of the village. She's focused on bigger and better things. She's focused on her career. She's focused on uh, being the, the best that she can be in this position. And she doesn't think that the concerns of the villagers are what are going to promote her. The, that's not what her superiors care about. But she has been ambitious and has been promoted to this position as village leader. So she worked her way up through the ranks. So who is Captain Learian's biggest rival nemesis? Now we already kind of defined uh, Kalan Odera as a rival a nemesis. And since she worked her way up through the ranks and Kalan Odera is a retired soldier, Maybe at one point in time they were lieutenants together or, or, or somewhere at that level and her ambition overwhelmed his. Uh, there, there may have been some conflict there where she saw that he was um, trying to go after the position she wanted and she outmaneuvered him. Uh, so there's bad blood there. Uh, she doesn't trust him because of this, because of what she may have done to him or what he may have done to her. Um, but that's her biggest rival nemesis. Generally, I like to, to have this be someone entirely different because we're trying to flesh out, build out a village. But in this particular instance, I, I think this works. Uh, it, th this creates some interesting lines of conflict for the story to develop around. Here's where we can get, add some extra flair, extra uh, personality to the situation is who is Captain Learian's biggest ally, best friend? Um, and I, I want this to be somebody beyond the military. Uh, it could be her spouse, it could be uh, somebody of that nature, but I, I like the idea of, of somebody who is apart from it all. Um, somebody of lower, just outside of the class ranking kind of thing. So I, I, she's always ranging out into the woods. I like the idea of maybe there is a, uh, what was that? Oh, yeah, it's a hunter. Uh, we'll, we'll name him. Um, again, don't, don't get caught up on names. Names can be changed. Just make sure that you know why you're naming somebody something and if you need to change it why you're changing it uh, but we're going to have a, a reginald uh, 
Sarlson. Reginald Sarlson. Um, better make a note here. He's a hunter that that is usually out in the woods. And Captain Learian and Reginald, it's not a romantic link, but it's, it's kind of a... They both like the hunt. They both like being out in the woods and maybe he's a ranger maybe she's a ranger um but they have a connection and she knows that he's always got her back and likewise for her uh so what is captain learen's most notable physical trait and this is very surface like what when people look at captain leary and what's the first thing they notice about her i'm just going to say long golden hair and what is captain learen's most notable personality trait uh i already kind of mentioned this but uh she's cold and aloof basically if it's not about hunting if it's not about being out in the wilderness she just doesn't care she doesn't she has no empathy for it but doesn't understand it uh what does captain larian want to accomplish as village leader in the near future and beyond so she has goals herself so what is she trying to accomplish uh, as the village leader? She obviously wants to do a great job. She senses a, a threat out there. Uh, she wants to make a mark. Um, so she wants a significant victory. Uh, to further her career. So she's looking for a battle. She's looking for um, something that she can take back to her superiors and say, look what I accomplished, which means that she may be a little bit reckless. Uh, she may be taking some unnecessary risks. I'm not sure about that. Uh, and I have an error here. Okay, and now we want to see how is Captain Learian handling the different threats to the village. So how is she handling the animal threat, the wild wolves that are attacking? So she's going to uh, have increased patrols. Uh, so that, that kind of... she. She uses the wolf threat as even a bigger excuse for her to be out in the wilderness. Um, and then how is Captain Lyra handling the city leader versus community leader threat? And this is, as I said, that defined that the town's guards are a little bit uh, corrupt. Um, she is aloof and unswayed by appeals of like hey there's something going on here um so she's part of this threat she's the city leader who is not being responsive and how she is reacting to it is she is uh primarily ignoring it uh she's just basically saying the villagers are complainers um so she's ignoring it and then how is she handling the bullies threat, which is tied to this. This is uh, reports that the town's guard are being coercive, um, being thieves, being uh, ill-tempered and, and uh, causing concern in the village itself. And she keeps passing the buck to Lieutenant Toriak. Basically, any time a report lands on her desk that she needs to deal with about this topic, she's like, Toriak, this is your job to take care of. And uh, keeps passing the buck down to him. Uh, so now we start detailing Lieutenant Toriak. Like, why is Lieutenant Toriak the most powerful person in the village? And basically, um, Captain Learian 
has entrusted all her power into him. And who's his biggest rival nemesis? Um, I'm going to... This is still going to be Kaelin O'Dara. Like, that's the line of conflict. We have the, the military leadership and the village leadership coming in conflict. So Kaelin is definitely his biggest rival, biggest nemesis, biggest threat. Uh, who is his biggest ally and friend? And this is great to get a minion toady type. So we're going to have a, a sergeant... Uh, Yurian Swiller. <laughs> I said, don't worry about the names. You can always change the, the names. Uh, and I know that that is... That's not a good name. <laughs> I say don't worry about it. But, but then as I'm looking at that, I, I see how that's going to get twisted really quick. Um, so we're going to... Eliel, uh, Eliel Sweetwater. And this is going to be the toady. This is going to be Toriax Lackey. Um, it's the baldric to his uh, Black Adder kind of character. <laughs> Okay, and Toriak's most notable physical trait uh, is he's, he's he's got a I, we're we're gonna lean into this. he's got a kind of a weaselly face, weasel faced, and most notable personality trait is arrogance. What are his goals? Easy, enrich himself. It's all about getting gold in the bank for him. How is Lieutenant Turek handling the animal threat? Um, basically, he keeps telling the townspeople to, he, he blames the townspeople, right? They, they must be leaving out food. Um, so he is essentially punishing the villagers for the threat. And how is Lieutenant Toriak handling the city leader versus community leader threat? Well, he is putting pressure on Kaelin. Um, he sees Kaelin as a threat, and he's basically saying that Kaelin is a rabble rouser and is stirring up trouble and finding every excuse he can to uh, put pressure on Kaelin to, to leave. Um, Kalen is the biggest obstacle of Lieutenant Toriak having full control over the village. Um, so he's trying to every, do everything he can to put Kalen out of business and get Kalen to leave or even put Kalen in the brig. Stocks, brig. I'm not sure what the keep would have, uh, but put him in jail. Lock him up. Get him get him out of there. So and how is Lieutenant Toriak handling the bully's threat? Well, he is the bully threat. Then we come detailing Kaelin Nodera. Why is Kaelin Nodera the most influential person? Because he straddles both worlds of the military and the village life. Uh, biggest rival nemesis is going to be um, Captain Lyrian. Biggest ally friend. Um, we're going to have this be, let's see, who, who would be in town? We, we have general village support. It's going to be the laundress. Um, so it's going to be the, a washerwoman. Uh, we'll call her 
uh, Penelope. And I'm not going to give her a last name. Uh, most notable physical trait. Ooh, we're going to have a, a mean looking scar right across his face. Maybe he took a, a poleaxe to the face. Uh, most notable personality trait is he is going to be. Um, you, you kind of wanted to be laconic, but as an innkeeper, hospitality, uh, he is going to be uh, gracious. And that's kind of how he got on good terms with the people of the village. So he's just a very gracious person. What are his immediate and long-term goals? Uh, the immediate goal is to uh, rid the town of the bullies. To, to bring a sense of order back to the military leadership of the town. And the long-term goal, um, he wants to build the town up. Like he, he wants to truly make this a thriving village. Uh, so this is gonna be investing in the village. So how's Kaelin Adara handling the animals threat? Well, the wild wolves attacking people. Um, as the innkeeper, as a retired soldier, there's not a lot he can do, but he offers advice on how to handle wolves when they're they're out and about. Uh, and how is Kalen O'Dara handling the city leader versus community leader threat? He's the community leader in this dynamic. Um, he is being patient and collecting stories and anecdotes about what the guards are doing. Uh, with some hope of eventually convincing Captain Learian to do something about it. And now is Kalen handling the bully threat? This is where he's going to be a little bit more direct. And he is going to uh, basically confront them whenever he notices it happening. Okay, now let's get on to our most knowledgeable person in the village. Good old Doc Dunspar, uh, the dwarven healer. Why is he the most knowledgeable? Well, he is well studied. Uh, reads up on all sorts of subjects. Uh, he knows about religion, arcana, history, medicine. He's just well-versed in all these topics, has a, a big library of different books. Uh, he is naturally curious. Uh, his biggest rival, Nemesis. Um, we're gonna, I, I don't have a, a thought on this. But I'm thinking that maybe there is uh, an, oh, yeah, there's an herbalist in the, um, in the village. And she also gives limited healing, but not, not as well versed, not as uh, thorough as Doc Dunspar. But uh, herbalist, um, Willa. Red tree. And who is Doc Dunspar's biggest ally friend? Um, you know, I'm gonna. It, it's it's herbalist Willa, Red Tree. Uh, rival and friend, they're frenemies. Um, so in one. In a professional sense, they're rivals, nemesis, and in a personal sense, they're allies and friends. So it, it's situational, and that'll create for some mixed emotion moments. Uh, Doc Dunspar's most notable physical trait is going to be a super long white beard. His notable personality trait is intense curiosity. 
his goals, his immediate goal. Um, he wants to to create a catalog of animals in the uh, Grimcrest Barrens. So he's writing a book. He's writing a book, an encyclopedia of sorts of, of the different animals in the area. So he wants all sorts of information about whatever animals the PCs come across and would, would probably be asking if they'd seen anything unusual and always wanting them to collect specimens that they can. Um, so how is he handling the animal threat? He would be very curious about why these wolves are suddenly attacking the village. Um, so he would be most likely to to send out investigations, investigators send out adventurers to investigate. Um, he's, he's, he's not strong enough to do it himself, so he's got to find people capable of doing it. So he's always like trying to convince the to town's guards, anybody with any sort of level of strength and ability to protect themselves, to go out and investigate what's going on with these wolves because uh, he knows it's, there's something not natural with it. Uh, how is Dunsmore handling the city leader versus community leader threat? So he's going to be the neutral party in this. Um, he has to work with the military. He has a good relationship with Captain Learian. He has a good relationship with Kalen. So he's the mediator in this threat. And how is uh, Doc Dunspar handling the bullies threat? He, he's not. He, he's not affected by it. Um, he may hear stories. He may patch up uh, wounds. But really, he, he knows it's beyond his um, concern. That's something that he can take care of. And the town's guard leave him alone. Like, they know that he's kind of untouchable in this situation. So he's just not affected by it. So we're going to run through the other notable PCs real quick just to get a sense of uh, who they are, and then we'll be finishing up this video. Uh, this section of the sheet is um, controlled by the workbook data, and it's based on the size of the village. This is a suggestion. I have a tiny village. According to my little table of, of NPCs, there'd be no clerics, no clerics living in this village. If you want a cleric living in the village, there's a cleric living in the village. Um, it's just, this is my quick guide of, should there be a cleric, is there a cleric, that sort of thing. Uh, so at this level, there, there are no clerics living in the village. Also, tiny village, there are no magic users. Magic users need diamonds and, and rare um, components to cast their spells. That You probably need a larger city to get access to those kind of things. Uh, it does not mean that a magic user of a high level couldn't have come from the village and set up shop out in, or come from a large city and set up shop in the village. But for the most part, most likely no magic users in the village. So if there's a mage in the party, if there's a sorcerer, warlock, wizard uh, in the party, like they're going to kind of be impressive to the villagers. Uh, magic is just not something that they see on a daily basis. Uh, in a tiny village, there's most likely one thief, one rogue of the third level. Um and I'm, I'm gonna it's it's gonna be some some lad some teenager young adult kind of person who just isn't fitting in is a miscon malcontent um and has found it that it's easier to just kind of take instead of earn um 
we'll have her name be um, Sarah. Okay, and in terms of fight, now this would not necessarily be the people of the keep. Obviously, Captain Liarian would be a fighter of a much higher level of than a third level fighter. But this is within the village itself. There's at least one fighter with a maximum level of three. Um, and I'm just going to, it's just going to be another villager just to help round this out. And it is going to be uh, Gregor Yunschild. Don't have to detail who this is, but it's just nice knowing that, hey, there's this fighter within the village. Um, now there's probably two artisans and artisans are blacksmiths, uh, weavers, uh, people who, who make stuff, uh, in the village. And there's one or two and I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to give them names yet, but, but there's going to be a blacksmith because the keep needs somebody to make armor, repair weapons, do that kind of stuff. So there's going to be a blacksmith there. And then... Um, along the line, there's going to be a leather, a leather worker. So I can I can create those characters as I need them, but it, in the back of my mind, it's nice to know that um, there's someone that's that's making some farm implements. Uh, yeah, actually, I probably won't let the blacksmith be too much of a weaponsmith. Uh, maybe able to repair a weapon, but not make a weapon. That's just to keep things, um, I like keeping resources limited in the starting village. And then there's at least one traveling merchant. So this is not, the village isn't big enough to have a store in and of itself. Uh, so there's probably just one merchant who makes the rounds and that merchant is carrying 25 to 100 gold piece of goods. So this isn't a super wealthy merchant. This is, he's carrying some lantern oil and some cloth and just super basic kind of things that the villagers would need um, pots and pans once in a while so if there's something that the villagers want they would probably have to place an order with this merchant and then wait until the merchant comes back around to get it uh, i actually have a note on the merchant because i was already thinking about the merchant before um, so we have a name here, uh, Caspian Visper. So we're going to end the video there. So this is just the NPCs of the village of Black Rock Keep. Uh, and from here, you can start building out more uh, detail around each of these individuals. But just from this point, uh, you could introduce the players and their characters to this village. Uh, at this point, I'm going to end the video. Uh, see you in video number five. Uh, losing track of the videos now. But um, I would love to know if you are using this tool, how are you using it. I would love to know about your campaign setting. What are you doing uh, to build out your, your campaign world? And do you have any methodology, any systems that you use to develop your campaigns? So hit me up. I'm on Twitter at Sean D. Francis. You can email me, uh, Sean at SeanDFrancis.com. See you in the next video.